السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی ٹو دی ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان کورس برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور وی آر ان ٹو لیکچر نمبر نائن اینڈ وی ڈسکسڈ ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر ہاؤ ٹو بلڈ اے برانڈ ویژن وی ویر اسٹل ان دا پروسیس آف ڈسکسنگ آر آر دا بلڈنگ دا برانڈ ویژن وین وی فون اوور سیلس شارٹ آف ٹائم And that brings us to the same discussion here in this very lecture. Before I proceed further, I would like to give you a recap of the last lecture, also in relation to what we have discussed so far in the course. The idea is to maintain your perspective so that so many different concepts that we are discussing one by one do not really bog you down and you don't really find yourself in the middle of something at which you may feel too much for the taking. In the last couple of lectures, I've been talking about developing the strategic management process. And the reason I started talking about that was that an understanding and appreciation of that process is a prerequisite to the understanding of strategic brand management process. We are very much into the brand development process and in that relation we are talking about developing the brand vision. We are also quite clear by now that a brand vision flows out of the overall business vision which must address future movements and future courses of action relating your brand. Okay, having talked about that, let us now get to the points precisely the way that we were discussing in the last lecture. Talking about building brand vision, I told you there are certain things which brand managers could have to take care of before they really can develop the right vision for the brand. And the first one is seek input from the top management. The second one which we were talking, which we were discussing, is closing the financial gap, meaning the contribution in financial terms which the company needs in order to bridge the gap, meaning the levels of revenues which you have today with the levels of revenues the company would like to have three years down the line or maybe five years down the line depending upon your long term for the business plan, brand managers have to come forward with their respective profit and loss accounts. It is that way that the company is going to determine as to how to close that gap. Brand X, for example, gives the company so much contribution. Brand Y gives the company that much contribution. And those respective contributions put together give the company overall contribution. And that tells the top management whether they are in line with whatever they have envisioned or not. We, in that regard, talked about our ability or inability relating price increase. In order to bridge that gap, one way is that we go for the price increase. Whether or not we can achieve that, that is something that we have to determine. We also discussed expanding markets and availability of your products, meaning your brands. Do we have the capability of going to additional markets or are there factors which might prevent our going there? So you've got to be very clear about that. I also talked about the factor of improving distribution, intensively and also extensively. I also talked about improving communication. You've got to be clear about the level of communication that you would like to have in order to talk with your consumers. Again, the fundamental is to be very clear about our ability or inability to do whatever is at hand. We are talking about the level of communication. That brings us to the next question, a very important question, and that is about introducing new offerings for new segments. We had barely started talking about this aspect when the time ran out, so let us talk about this now in detail. 
It is something that we discussed in relation to the one of the previous lectures with the help of the graphic illustration for company XYZ into the fast food market. Let us try to understand how the company can move waywards, meaning to the left into segment number four and I'm sorry, into segment number three and to right into segment number five. There is nothing stopping the company in terms of its movement into any segment it wants to be represented. The only fundamental again is whether we can do that or not. We have to be clear about our ability to sell something in the lower segment of the market of the same quality which has become our benchmark and by the same token we've got to be clear about our ability to sell something at a higher price in segment number five which is on the right of the segment where we are at the moment. Now this is not to say that from here we're going to move to segment three and then segment five and that restricts our movement. No, we can go even further down or we can go even further up. Segment number five is rupees 100 plus. The circumstances that might take the company or might necessitate for the company to start considering another segment which could be hypothetically segment number six having a price range of like uh, maybe rupees 200 to 250. What are you supposed to be doing then in coordination with people from the operations department? You have to come up with a quality level which is at least the same as you have at the moment or even better. I think you would like to create another benchmark and you would like to go for even higher level of quality because you are increasing the price or price-wise you are getting into range which is like twice as much as you have been before. So that's the ability you have to look into whether you can do that and if you're confident which you should be and if you've done your homework properly in relation to all the attributes the brand is going to have or the new offering is going to have and in relation to the benefits which you think the product carries and it promises and you are confident that those the benefits can be delivered, then there should be nothing stopping you. Talking of the segments, let us take uh, uh, once more a look at uh, the same uh, slide and uh, we can uh, uh, talk about segments in a little detail. Segments is not something which is restricted to geography. Segment is not something which is restricted to price or any other variable or aspect of the marketplace or marketing. Segmentation is something which has got to be understood a little comprehensively. And let me tell you, there was a time when marketing people used to look at segments from the standpoint of demography. In other words, uh, the market research which marketing people carried out that rested on demographic basis and demographic characteristics or properties being the basis of the market research presented you with uh, a portion of population with similar income levels, with, uh, with similar age groups, and when I say similar, the definition of similarity was coined or put forth by the marketing people. Like this is a segment or this is a group which is between the ages of like 25 to 50 or maybe from 25 to 30. The objective was to determine that the buying habits, the likes and dislikes, the biases and the preferences would be similar because we are dealing with people who have very similar attributes in terms of their life, lifestyles 
And those lifestyles emanated basically from the income levels that they had or that they have and the age brackets within which they all are. In came another concept and that is psychographics. On the basis of psychographics, the marketing people carry out research which is quantitative in nature and those quantitative findings deal with personality and attitudes of consumers. It is quite possible that people demographically here may have the same kind of biases which people in another group of um, income levels or meaning uh, group of um, demographics have. So there could be similar thinking, there could be similar likes and dislikes across demographic lines and that is what psychographics are all about. So the marketing people thought that there are people who like to wear jeans for example and who are in demographic group A for example and that group is a low middle class group in terms of economics. Let us suppose for a moment and then there are people who like to wear jeans and drive very expensive cars. So this is one example of psychographics. There could be other examples as well. There are people for one particular demographic area liking to go to fast food restaurants. At the same time, you have the millionaires who also like to go there. So in other words, if you restrict your the marketing research only to demographics, it may not give you very accurate findings because you are excluding other groups or other areas of demographics that may have the same properties and they may also form your target market or the target audience as we say in marketing. Therefore, the need to understand psychography of different demographic groups is important to carry out the marketing research in its true essence. After psychographics, in came the concept of need-based segmentation. While I was talking about demographics and psychographics, just to recall, and just to rub in, I was talking in relation to segmentation, meaning segmentation on the basis of demographics, segmentation on the basis of psychographics. And now I'm going to talk about segmentation on the basis of need. The concept is, or the rationale is, if you as marketing people can identify the need correctly, the chances are you will go right in terms of all the movements for the brand, its present movements and its future movements. If you have identified the need rightly, you know the right segment you are trying to have an appeal for. And therefore, you will create a brand with the right identity and the right identity will lead towards the right image because everything has got to be consumer based and therefore, you have to you have to be consumer oriented everything has got to be a reflection of the consumer having given the right identity and obtained the right image you have done the job and therefore need based segmentation is the latest concept and in a way the accurate most concept so far which is a very important tool to understand for brand managers and marketing people. So this is a question which you have to answer about new offerings and segmentation. To summarize answer to this question I would say it once again new offerings can be lower priced and new offerings can be higher priced. You have to look into your abilities, 
your marketing abilities, your operations based abilities, whether or not you are in a position to handle all that you are envisioning at the moment. That brings us to the next question, which is to be answered, and that is, are there any possible acquisitions in the marketplace? Are there any brands which are worth consideration in terms of uh, acquiring them? You might think that the brand you have, meaning your own, own brand at the moment, has a certain limit to its potential. You may not have hit the potential at the moment, but a point will come when it may hit the climax. And therefore, you would like to go for another brand which is on the market, already selling, moving very well, having loyal customers, and you might think that acquiring this brand is going to bring the company added share of the market, and hence added revenues, and hence added profitability, which will lead to so many different things like in a better cash earnings, the better cash flows, and so on and so forth, better share value. So you might start considering acquisitions. Uh, when I say that, it is not that the brand managers start considering that. It is the job of the top management. And like I pointed out earlier, the business development is one of their fundamental jobs. And they also have people um, sitting at top slots who are responsible for business development. But your job is to point out your job is to let them know or to impart the useful or the fruit, possibly fruitful market knowledge. Here is a brand which is there for, not for the taking, but for um, buying. How do you find that out? You are in the marketplace, and when I say you, I obviously mean your peers from the sales department. You also go to the market once in a while just to touch base with people who really matter so that you can have first-hand knowledge of all the movements taking place in the market in relation to your brand and also in relation to competition. Until the time that you know your movements up against those of competitors, you really cannot compare with your brand are the properties of your brand with those of competitors. Anyway, coming back to acquisitions, everything starts from the market. And having known the possibility that an acquisition can take place to the benefit of the company, you may like to bring that to the notice of the top management, and that starts the process in motion. You may not be the only one bringing that knowledge to the top management. They may also be in the picture already, but it is always good if information, if every uh, kind of information from various quarters of the market flows to the top management through your offices. It's always good. Having talked about six basic questions, now, this is not to say that we should restrict our study of how to close the financial contribution gap to these six questions only. No, these questions are meant to give you an idea about the kinds of questions that must flash into your mind and answers to which must be given by you in a very well-structured way so that the top management, with your support, can make the right most decisions about how to build the vision. The answers to these questions commit all of us, meaning all members of the management, to move very st strategically in relation to all the moves that the company makes to achieve its financial and strategic goals. Having said that, let us take a look at um, 
a graphic illustration which is very easy to follow and uh, gives you a nice picture of uh, how you really can close the gap. And like I said, it is an illustration. I already have talked about all these factors. You see two bars on this slide. On the left, we have a figure of rupees 100 million. And this bar represents year 2006 or year X. The next bar shows year Y. I don't want to say which year that is. It could be three years down the road or it could be five years down the road. Meaning this is the destination which the company would like to reach at the end of the strategic business plan period. Going back to the first bar, which is the present year, year X, you can see we have a revenue level of rupees 100 million. And then on top of that, this blank white area, and we call that growth gap. That gap represents rupees 70 million. In other words, what it means is that by the end of the plan period, we would like to achieve as a company rupees 170 million worth of sales or revenue level. Now the question is how to achieve that? How to bring that additional 70 million? Take a good look at the next bar, which is the period representing the last year of the plan. We still can see 100 million, and the reason that we are still showing that 100 million is because this is where we started. But on top of that, we are showing additional rupees 30 million, and we call it brand strengthening. In other words, we envision strengthening of a brand to the extent of bringing to the company another rupees 30 million. How we do that? I think you're very clear about that. You go into the better communication, you go into more segments, you come up with you know, new offerings and um, you expand your markets you improve your distribution, you improve availability. All the questions which you answered in relation to closing the financial gap. So in other words, at the end of the business plan period, our brand is going to bring us 130 million. Now this is hypothetical. You might start debating that 30 million is no good. And this precisely could be the question posed by the top management Two people like you, but we are not really satisfied with this rupees 30 million. This should be like maybe, you know, 40 or somebody might say 50. And the debate goes on. The debate goes on on the basis of certain rationale. They have to come up with some very solid arguments or solid reasoning. There shouldn't be an argument. There should be solid reasoning on the basis of certain historical trends, on the basis of whatever is going on in the market. In relation to competition, somebody might point a finger at you. We have seen competition growing from here to there, and God knows their sales have risen 200% or 300%, and you are showing an increase of just about 30% over the next five years. My point here is whatever brand strengthening is going to be presented by you in terms of your projections for the plan period has to be based on certain logic and certain rationale. Having said that, let us talk about the small area which sits, sits right on top of that 30 million and that again is additional business and that is going to come to the company through new products. Now new products, it may be your area or it may not be. Probably it is going to be the area of another brand manager because we are talking about new products. 
it may be the same brand, but that's a separate issue altogether, whether the company is going to maintain the same brand while going across the category, or the company is going to have different brand names, standalone brands. We talked about that, and we shall again talk about that. Anyway, getting back to new products, you tell the company, with the help of your peers or after having had an understanding from the, the conversation or the discussion you had with the top management while you were seeking their input, that you should go for new products. Those could be related products, like I said, and you say, or the marketing manager says, we shall bring the company additional 20 million rupees through the new products. So that elevates the level from 100 to 150, meaning 100 plus 30 plus 20, 150 million. But that is not the end of it. We still have this shortfall of another 20 million, which we have to have in order to close the gap, which is the gap between today and the end of the plan period. And naturally, the gap is not going to come on the last night of the plan period. You will agree with me. You have to start working on that now. Or maybe at a certain time frame, which is maybe six months down the road, nine months down the road, or a year down the road. Whatever that is, we have to pinpoint that. So that execution strategies or implementation starts taking place at the right time to enable the company to achieve all the objectives. Getting back to that gap, the remaining 20 million, we say that is going to come through acquisitions. And that's the question that was one of the questions to which you answered while you were trying to build up as to how to close that gap. Acquisition of uh, maybe your, uh, not maybe, rather the most probably the one of your uh, the competitors. The one of the competitors, maybe they have, um, I mean, the company has a very good brand. Somehow the company is not in a position to grow the brand uh, with uh, the right kind of uh, support. They cannot foster it. They're not good foster parents, in other words. They are short of resources, maybe they are short of money, they are short of uh, with human resource. They do not really have the competencies to develop human resource to the level where they would like to see the brand. And being realistic, they think uh, they can sell that brand to you, make good money out of that, and then get into some other business, which might be uh, the kind of business they will excel at. So you start you initiate the process of acquisition. Top management comes in, the business development people, uh, I mean the top manager, his associates, his peers, his subordinates, everybody jumps in and the process starts. And you are supposing that you are going to bring in additional 20 million from that acquisition or acquisitions, if it is more than one brand or more than one company. That generally is not the case because it's, it's quite a process. It takes time, it takes resources, and then you have to plan after you have acquired that brand or the company. The answers to all the questions that I've talked about will lead all of you in the company in a very strategic way, which in turn means that your moves regarding your business will be very strategic. And that's the name of the game while you're developing the model. That brings us to the third major factor or the aspect which has to be addressed before you build your brand vision. I will again recall, the first was you sought top management's input, second we have just wrapped up, you looked into how you're going to 
close in the financial contribution gap. And now the third one is acquiring additional data relating to industry. Why do we have to do that? You know, we keep talking about things like uh, that we need to have the right support, we need to have the right basis, and um, we need to have the right strategies, and the right strategies will come only if we have the right vision, so on and so forth. We talk about these things because we just cannot move ahead without these things. Now, in order to build all this, we need to have a basis. The question is, where is that basis? Where does that come from? That basis is the collection of data in relation to the industry you are a part of. So in other words, you have to go out, collect data, additional data about the industry. And when I talk about the industry, I will define what the industry is. You have to collect data about your brand, and you have to collect data about competitors' brands in order to arrive at the right decisions or in order to arrive at the right understanding for building the brand vision. You will agree with me that nothing is going to serve the purpose more than having a very clear understanding of the industry you are a part of. The industry analysis consists of so many different variables or so many different aspects. Each one of those has got to be understood very clearly. And in order to have clarity of mind, let us talk about those one by one. We have to define the industry first of all. What is the industry? Second of all, we have to look into the growth factor. What has been the past history of the industry? And you know the industry consists of so many firms. You are a part of that, meaning all the firms, when put together, form the industry. We have to look at the key growth factors, and we also have to look at the seasonality, if it is involved, and we've got to be very clear about the industry life cycle. Definition of the industry is the first point of departure toward the analysis, and when you Kick that off. You must consider the description of the industry sector. Now, let us talk about this a little in detail. What does that mean? If you are into, for example, clothing business, you've got to have a complete understanding of the whole textiles sector. This is not to say that you've got to know the, the kind of machines that are involved at various stages of the textiles and fabrication and so on and so forth. What it means is that you as a brand manager should understand the economic ramifications of all the developments that are taking place within the industry. Starting with the kind of cropping patterns that we've been having for the last few years, you should be able to draw certain inferences and you should be able to extrapolate those inferences in terms of your projections or in terms of the projections relating the industry where the industry will go. We shall talk about a few more things which come into play while we are taking a look at the economic sector or for the overall sector within which the industry operates. We have to consider all the products offered by the industry. Now this means that you are considering not only your brands, you're also considering all the brands which are offered or which are there on the market by the competitors. Unless you have an understanding of those, your understanding of the complete industry is not complete. Another thing you must look at is the geographic scope of the industry in order to have a complete understanding relating your industry. Most of the industries operate on the national basis. But there are industries which are very regional. And maybe you are the part of the industry or part of an industry which is regional. You've got to be clear about that. If it is impacted by some other industries, 
which are beyond the geographic region, that is something else, and you have to take those factors also into account. But it is very important to understand and to know the geographic basis, the scope. If the industry that you are a part of is international and anything that is happening beyond the national borders impacts whatever we are doing here in our market, that also has to be considered. Industry analysis extends also to segmentation. You have to take into account while carrying out that analysis, different segments. If you are, like I told you, if you are part of the textiles and garments, you have to look at different segments. You may define segments as you know, cropping, and ginning, and spinning, and fabrication, and then garment making. A computer manufacturer will segment his market. Can you guess? Can you think? Okay, let me tell you. A computer manufacturer may segment his market into products like personal computers, PCs, maybe notebooks, I mean laptops, and yet another, servers for web hosting. Segmentation by products from the standpoint of the industry makeup is very important. What kind or what kinds of segments laptops or PCs are finding their way or finding the sales into is a separate discussion. But from the industry point of view, from the point of view of the, the constitution of the industry, that we've got to understand segments by different products and by different sectors, subsectors. Having all uh, the variables in place and having answers to all the factors I've mentioned, you are well on your way to defining the industry. I can put it in the following words that you have to define the industry by taking into account anything and everything that affects the industry or that is a part of the industry and that may have the potential to affect your business positively or negatively, it must be considered. The definition, in other words, has got to be broad enough to take into consideration so many different factors and at the same time, it should be narrow enough for you to draw the right comparisons. You should not go astray while carrying out those comparisons. Those have got to be meaningful while you're comparing your brand against competition in terms of maybe qualitative attributes, in terms of quantitative things, whatever it is, it is the definition of industry which is going to be translated into various areas which are going to affect the process of planning. And we've got to be clear about all those. Let us see what those are. The next one, as I pointed out earlier, is the industry growth and size. We've got to be very clear about the growth patterns. That the industry like, you know, five years ago was here. Industry today is here. And industry tomorrow, which is the end of the plan period, is going to be there. How do we fit in? How do we fare in relation to the growth of the industry? You must know the size of the industry in terms of the total volume. If, for example, you are a manufacturer of televisions and you know that your assembly line can assemble so many televisions on daily basis and therefore so many televisions daily basis times 30 times 12. So the number of televisions you produce around the year is X. And you also know because you're part of the industry or you should know that all other manufacturers, your competitors, the kinds of production processes, the kinds of assembly lines they have, their capacities, so that you will know the level of volumes that the industry as a whole, meaning all the competitors put together or all the major players, if not all the players, at least all the major players are producing. Only then you are in a position to relate yourself with competition 
and only then you can come up with right figures relating your strategic goals. I will talk about those like market share. How can you work out your market share accurately or realistically unless you know that the total industry is 100 units and you're going to sell 10. Only then you will know that your market share is going to be 10%. It's not whimsical. It has to be worked out on certain bases. So the growth factor you know and on the basis of the growth factor you have worked out the size of the industry and on that basis you have worked out certain figures. You should in the same breath I would say figure out the monetary value of the industry meaning if you are selling for the 100 televisions every day or whatever the figure is times your selling price you know your revenue you already have figured out the production levels of other players and you know their pricing as well because you're part of the market it is not difficult to work out their revenue levels and therefore you also know the total level of revenues produced by the industry as a whole and only then you can relate yourself with the competition in terms of your share of the market monetarily. There may be a case where a company has this level of share of the market in terms of percentage but this level of share of the market in terms of revenues meaning the market share in rupees terms is lower than the market share in volume terms. Why does that happen? I'm sure you have the answer to that. Maybe you are selling at a lower price and probably you are. Or even if you're selling at the same price, maybe your costs are higher. I mean your direct costs in relation to distribution and market development and so on and so forth. That discussion is there for some other time. But this is just to give you an example. The difference between two types of market shares. The one is in terms of units, meaning volume. The other is in terms of revenue or rupees. These things give us very good leads into the right questions which must be answered while we are collecting data, additional data, relating industry we are a part of. Why? Well, we keep talking of that. This is another graphic presentation which shows you market shares of three different players. And let us assume that these shares represent volumes. The company you belong to is the blue one. And we are showing the market shares in relation to a plan period, which is three years. We have the first year, we have year two, and we have year three. You are gaining all this at the expense of company MNP which is 38% in year one and ends up for your plan period the way you look at the industry with 23%. It is quite a dip. Now whether the company is really going down or not, I mean that's your projection and that's the, your vision. If it happens the way that you project, you really have your finger at the market pulse and you really understand your competition. If it doesn't happen that way, it is going to be a solid state of affairs. But the point is that you've got to be prepared exactly according to the way you are building up your vision of the industry. Now let us take a brief look at uh, the company ABC. It is 29% in year one, and it is going to increase its business the way you look at it in year two from 29 to 33 percent and then 
at the end of the plan period, it is it stays static. It is still sitting with the same with the market share. Whether it happens the same way or not, again remains to be seen. But this is a, a hypothetical case where the market has um, a particular size and you are increasing within that market and you are cutting into another company by snatching share from that company only because you happen to be a smarter player than that company. How is that happening? Well, look at all the variables that I've talked about so far. Now, talking about the overall size, the market size, sorry, not the market size, the size of the industry which comprises these three players may not remain the same. I mean, this was just to show you a hypothetical case and the size of the industry will remain the same only if the market is mature. You will recall that we discussed this thing as one of the factors which leads or which has led to brand proliferation because we have so many brands on the marketplace because people just don't know how to grow their business and they think by bringing in more brands, more and more brands, they can cut into other players market shares. Maybe this is that kind of a situation, but uh, we are talking very hypothetically. Since it is not the case in most of the cases, let us talk about an industry which is growing. And that again, I explain with the help of another graphic illustration. Here you see three pies, year one, year two, and the third one representing year three. And you can see, as I do, the pie relating to year one is small, the other one bigger, and the third one the biggest. What is happening is that the market is growing. Look at the implications. You being blue, 33% in year one, moving to 37% in year two, and 44 to year three is one thing. But the implication is another in terms of revenues and also in terms of uh, units because you are 33 percent in relation to a certain size of the industry meaning a certain size of the market the next year you have gained another four percentage points which has brought you to 37 percent and now this 37 percent is not out of the number of units which the industry or the market as a whole sold in year one. You are into year two. So this 37% becomes even more significant for you. In other words, this might be less harmful for company MNP whose share of the market is decreasing. But that share is decreasing in relation to a market which is growing. So the share of this company in terms of number of rupees may not see the size of dip or the downfall which it would have had if the industry overall was not increasing. I think with this example, we are quite very clear about how should we relate ourselves or how should we stack ourselves up against the competition when it comes to comparisons which should be very meaningful because you're right now in the process of building up your brand vision and the brand vision cannot be correctly translated into financials and into strategic objectives unless you have built your vision very accurately. That brings us to the next factor which we call key growth factors. Now these growth factors are the ones which we have to take into account before we can answer all the questions which we must answer relating additional data from the industry. And let me tell you that these factors are external factors and these are beyond the control of the company. At the same time, these are the factors which really give an impetus to uh, the market growth and the level of demand in the marketplace. Can you think of an example? Envision yourself working for a company that is affected by these um, 
growth factors, car industry, or any other industry that sells consumer durables. Look at the situations of banks in this country. They all have grown, they all have improved their services, and all have offered so many different products, so many different financial instruments and products, that a common man or a common consumer is in a very good position to afford what he or she could not afford in the yesteryears. I mean, the number of cars that we see on the roads of this country is tremendous. It, is, it really has grown. The number of televisions in our homes, the number of DVDs, this, that, and that, everything has multiplied. These, this is one of the external factors, which is a classic example for the market of Pakistan. How industry or how different industries have grown. So the question is, when you are affected by an external growth factor, you have to come up with the right insight. You have to have the right insight and foresight to be able to have the right vision in order to have the right translation of that vision into the most realistic financial and strategic objectives. Having done that, you're all set to prepare your findings in the form of a report and you take that report back to the top management where you started the process and you tell them that this is a vision that I have developed or you know the VS marketing department has developed and um, on the basis of these findings this is the way the brand we see the brand moving in future years and that sets the process in motion your brand development process is into motion and that automatically will become part of the overall management process. Having talked about this, let me wrap up today's lecture by recapping that we basic, basically talked about how to develop a brand vision which is a part of the overall business decision and after we have had this clear brand vision, the stage is all set to developing the brand picture, which is the next step toward building the brand management model. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.